but there are some things we intend to do. I have now changed the economic analyses group in our Department of Agriculture so that when that food price increase is posted, we're going to have a press conference in the Department of Agriculture and talk to consumers in Chicago and Los Angeles and Cape Girardeau, Missouri, and every other place to explain what has taken place, what's happened, that the farmer is not to blame, that this food cost increase is coming because we are apparently demanding that convenience. And maybe we can get consumers to start cutting their food bill by doing more of this at home. And this is going to help all of us. You know and I know that your production costs have doubled in the last eight years. That's a fact. We call that inflation. I farm 28 years, and I know and you know that we who farm buy at retail and sell at wholesale and pay the freight both ways. There isn't a thing you can do about some of those production costs. There isn't a thing you can do about some of those production costs if you're left alone and are called upon to struggle with it by yourself. And you know and I know and we're telling the consumers of these United States that you, we who farm have no way that we can add the cost of inflation onto the price of food at the retail level or even at the wholesale level. We do the best we can by increasing target prices to reflect changes in cost of production. And that's a matter we could go into later, but as a matter of fact, I have said, and I say tonight, that the farmers of the United States have more to gain by the President's efforts to control inflation than perhaps any economic group in the United States. If we can get this thing under control, if we can stop this inflation that's tearing us apart, it means money in our pockets, yours and mine. If we can reduce the production cost 1%, that means a 4% increase in your net profit. And that's what the business is all about. It's net profit. It's not gross. And so, And so we have to think in terms of net profit. And in that context, it is absolutely imperative that inflation be brought under control. The President has a plan. It requires voluntary compliance by you and me and every consumer and every citizen of the United States. If we all make a modest contribution to that national plan, the program will work. And you and I as consumers, and we are, Agriculture, farmers in the United States consume $100 billion worth of goods and services produced in the city. And if, you, if this plan can be made to work, and I'm convinced it can, you and I as consumers will enjoy a measure of prosperity that we have not seen in the last decade. And so I'm discussing with the President's inflation fighters ways and means in which Inflation can be slowly but surely brought under control, and there is no single quick fix, no magic answer. It's something that will take time, and it will hurt us some individually in little dinky bits and pieces in ways that are kind of irritating, but it will solve a much bigger problem that if it isn't brought under control, will tear this country apart. Next question, what is being done to stop foreign purchase of our farmland? The fact of the matter is that no one really knows for sure how many foreign owners there are in the United States. Recently, the Congress passed a bill with an amendment authored by, or at least we credit, to Senator Eagleton, it's now law. We're in the process of implementing this new provision. About the middle part of January, ASCS county committees 
We'll be going to all the courthouses and we'll be sending notices in the newspapers in your county requiring that foreign owners or the operators of land which are foreign owned register that fact and send it in to me so that we can make it public. Oh, we'll not disclose individual names or addresses, of course, but we need to know precisely what's taking place. We'll make a report to the Congress and to the President and to the country, and then kind of decide from there what, if anything, should be done. The second study which we have underway is an examination of our tax laws. We're looking to see whether or not a foreign buyer has a tax advantage over you and me or any American purchaser. If we find that indeed a foreign investor has a tax advantage, then we are going to recommend a change in the American tax law so that no one has a competitive advantage in buying land in the United States. We're running out of time. Yeah. They said uh, your age are about like mine are. They know you're going to keep talking. So they said you've got to quit because you've got to be here in the car in a few minutes for All the KMOX right. call-in program. They won't wait on you. I'm going to just go through this quickly then and keep short answers. What's the future of the dairy industry? Good. How do you like that for short answer? Prices are... Prices now 50 cents over the support rate, and the prospects are promising for at least through the next 12 months. Beyond that, it's a little risky to forecast. Uh, what, or will the MTN agreement allow more dairy imports? The answer is no. How will the situation affect cow, -cow prices? I'm not sure I can answer that. I think, uh, I think uh, well, I know this, that behind every average cow is a better heifer. And, <laughs> And those average, those average cows are going to satisfy this hamburger demand. Now, what happens in the next two or three years it bears watching. In view of the recently announced feed grain program for 79, what do you expect the participation level to be? We think about the same as this year, six, eight million acres out. What would you suggest in the way of marketing strategy? Well, you've got it in the NFO. What was the average price per bushel of wheat sold to the Russians in 1974? I don't remember in 74, but in 1972, it was $1.62 a bushel delivered Gulf of Mexico. What prices do we currently get in our trade with that country? And does the government sell the grain? The answer is the government does not sell the grain. Prices are Chicago, Kansas City, plus freight. As a result of your travels in China, what are your best projections for increasing export sales to that country? Is China eligible for CCC credit? The answer to the last is yes, they are eligible. They did not ask for credit, however. They can get better interest elsewhere. The, um, the, uh, they're credit worthy. They don't owe anybody any money. <laughs> um, they are going to be buying six to ten million, no, ten million tons of grain in each of the next two or three years. Uh, we'll get our share, maybe more. We'd like to have all imported products coming into the U.S. subject to the same quality and safety standards as our own. What is your position on this situation? I agree completely. I'm told that time has run out. Thank you very much. Now, if you were...